Hi, my name is David A. Morrow. Hello, everybody. Some of you know me as an artist, mental health worker, retired, and an author of three books. I've completed my third book, and now I am going to reveal that third book. Oh, this is a painting that I just finished last night called A Wonderful Falls. <laughs> Some of my latest work. Some of my old. I hope you and your family are blessed. Now, this one here is David A. Morrow Sr.'s coloring book with the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall not make for yourself any graven or carved image. You shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the seventh to keep it holy. Honor your father and mother, so thy days will be long upon thy earth. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. And you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not covet your neighbor's goods. And since there are many texts of the Ten Commandments in different faiths, I use five of each. Basically, it's about love and treating people right. This is my third book. This book would be 20 bucks. It's a coloring book with the Ten Commandments. Of course, if you see any art that you like, you're more than welcome to purchase the print or the original. Negotiations are available. Well, some of my awards, first, second place. It's a big deal then. I think it was 2007, 2008. <laughs> Took first and second place. The other two books are in the Kansas City Public Library, which I've never tried to sell. And that first one was done in 95. It's called If the Devil Would Only Die. And if you know me, you know I've said this many times, if the devil would only die, then tears would be joy when they cry. Mothers would bear no pain while birthing their children under father's name. So the raindrops that scatter from above would be a brilliant sparkle of wet, pure love. And the soft earth beneath our heels would be a step of happiness that never tills. So the devil would never ever again exist in a way he would tumble like a wasted myth. And this piece here, of course, was on television. And so the color of the skin would be a bounty of light, so wonderfully beautiful and such an awesome sight. How perfect this would be for all of you and me if the devil would only die. If the devil would only die, no more adversities between men, no more hateful thought out trends. No lust and disrespect for human life and no beastly order from death's awful plight. Then heaven's emerald gates would swing wide and admit all of life inside. The good pleasure would never hide if the devil would only die. And by yours very truly, David A. Morrow. The third book that I did was called A Large Paper Sack. It's a children's book. Now these two books here are located in the main library of Kansas City, Missouri. The third book is in the copyrights on its way to the office, the one I did previously. This is called A Large Paper Sack. It's a children's book. It's dedicated to Negro baseball league players who considered themselves as barnstormers and had difficult time trying to become professional baseball players at a very difficult time. 
This is a fable of a kid, tough and able, who spends most of his days at a brown marble table. But the day would unfold and everyone would behold a precious gift from a short time ago. It began in the town on just an ordinary day when this kid in a wheelchair came to a baseball game to play. While others had gloves, hats, and bats, all this kid had was a large paper sack. You can't play ball with that, shouted the chubby kid with the ball on the bat. Where are your shoes and your hat? A skinny kid snapped behind that. Well, the boy first sat with his, without his ball or bat, without his gloves, shoes, or anything like that. All he had was a large paper sack and a dream to become much bigger than that. He knew he couldn't play because of an accident one day, but it's all okay because some things are just that way. In his sack, which was very neatly packed, was all he needed to play, in fact. There were six kids who gathered to see just what there could possibly be in that large paper sack. So the boy reached deeper, and you should have seen their little peepers. They all began to gasp that a full-grown man, a ball player, black. It was James Drew Foster who ignited the Negro Baseball League, and there was Josh Gibson, whose power was more than guaranteed. And don't forget Jackie Robinson, who paid and paid and paid, and then Fleetwood Walker, the first black pro baller, they say. There was Satchel Paige, whose legs were long and arms were strong, with powerful strikes that zing a song. And here comes Oscar Charleston, who could play and play and play. Now with a blink, a simple clap of the boys' hands, tap, 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 they all disappeared just like that. Then the kids saw to it that the boy got gloves, shoes, and a hat. Then they all played the rest of the day, all because it was simply that way. It's a large paper sack. I did it as a tribute to the African-American Negro baseball players. I was commissioned to do all these pieces, and I did a piece of a Negro ball player for the Negro Baseball Museum. Oh, I think that was back there in 1998. Oh, there you have it. My three books. Never tried to sell them or anything. People are asking me for them, so here they are. You can contact me, of course, at Paul Paul's Art, P A P A S, at msn.com. Paul Paul's Art, P A P A S A R T, at msn.com. And if you know me personally, of course, you can call me by phone. God bless. Thank you.